<clears throat> all right so when you're doing all these tests it's easy to get lost in oh a divided by c divided by b divided by d and a plus a plus c divided by z and x and r and, and all these fucking variables and uh a lot of people get stuck on just memorizing a's and b's and c's you know and that's just so dumb okay uh like obviously sure like it's a good idea to make these little tables here all right but what i'm going to focus on for this page is actually talking about how you want to think about three of these things and one of them actually isn't in here we're going to talk about risk by itself okay um before starting remember odds ratio use that for case controls cases people who have something controls people who don't and what you're doing is you're looking at people who have stuff and people who don't and then guessing exposures from that uh and it's kind of the you know the um the cousin of relative risk where relative risk looks at exposures you know and then you know it says from those exposures you you can look at how that affects cases okay so again again remember odds ratio is uh you look at people with uh copd and then you say ah they're more likely to be smokers and people with relative risk you would say well look at these smokers they're more likely to have copd than you know people who don't have that exposure and this concept of exposure is going to come time and time again as we look at all these different risks and risks and numbers needed to treat and needed to harm and you're going to start seeing that whether you consider an exposure to be good or bad it's going to affect which one of these we're talking about and a quick little uh jump ahead here when you look at uh attributable risk and absolute uh risk reduction an absolute risk reduction we're talking about a good exposure they call it an intervention and if you want to call a good exposure an intervention go for it okay and when they talk about attributable risk they mean bad exposures which they just call exposures uh, exposed and unexposed groups so this concept of exposure who's being exposed is it a good exposure is it a bad exposure i think it's best to think about it like that in order to understand what everyone's talking about so uh let's actually go around and, and start looking at this okay so for for an odds ratio i always think about it as a power ranger you got the little cross going on right here um and if there's one of them where you just want to plug and play whatever go for it odds ratio um but when you start talking about relative risks and risk reductions and absolute risks and attributable risks and all this this fucking and all sorry and all this this risk stuff uh you're going to get super lost in it if you don't stand back really quickly and just think about well it all comes down to just risks okay so what is risk well let's look at this example here you got a bunch of people going out on a hike 10 of them seven of them end up dying you know only three of them come back alive what's the risk well it's seven out of ten right and once again here when we're doing risk we're talking about an exposure here the exposure is the hike and the outcome the case right is death okay and, and if we wanted to for example we could say the outcome can be instead of coming back alive can be coming back with uh uh three come back with poison ivy okay and then in that case the the case is poison ivy versus no poison ivy but what's un, what's important to understand here is what's the risk what's the exposure okay risk is what are you getting from the exposure okay outcome from exposure 7 out of 10 people die from the exposure of that so relative risk whenever you see relative you have to imagine that they're talking about a proportion they're talking about a quotient it's something divided by something all right so with relative risk here's the example that we're going to use for the rest of this discussion you got 100 people in a town 50 of them are drug users 50 of them aren't and they're saying well okay well of these 50 20 of them um get hiv of course the 50 who are the drug users and two of them get hiv in which case if we're talking about of the 50 who aren't drug users so what's the relative risk well what do you do we take the risk for drug users and you take the risk of hiv for non-drug users so the risk in the 
uh, IV drug user group, uh, it's 20 divided by 50, it's 2 divided by 5, which is 0.4. Okay, well, what's the risk in the non-IV drug group? Okay, well, it's 2 divided by 50, which is 0 0.04. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, here's an interesting thing, right? You're 10 times more likely to get HIV if you do do IV drugs, according to this scenario. Of course, you, you compare 0.4 to 0 0.04, so the relative risk, you would say, it's 10. Now, when relative risk is equal to 1, then outcomes and exposures, it doesn't really matter. When relative risk is greater than 1, then that's not so hot. When relative risk is less than 1, hey, that's fantastic. So here in this example, we're talking about, you know, uh, IV drug users compared to non-IV drug users. So the exposure that we're looking at, because that's what risk is, you're looking at exposure, it's, well, let's look at IV drugs, IV drug use. And here the relative risk for IV drug use uh, of getting HIV is 10 times greater than a non-IV drug user. But similarly, similarly, right? Here the, how the relative risk is much greater than 1. We could have reworded this. We could have said the exposure here is being in a non-IV drug user group. And then we could have said, what's the relative risk of HIV for non-IV drug users? Well, here instead of doing 0.4 divided by... 0 0.04, we just do 0 0.04 divided by 0.4, which would give us 0.1, which is a very favorable relative risk, because it's less than 1. And so this concept of, if you want to frame it as a good exposure or a bad exposure, is going to start playing a lot when we look at attributable risk and absolute risk reductions, uh, number needed to treat and harm, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, again, you look at an exposure, and that's how you want to frame it. You want to frame it as a good exposure or a bad exposure. And from that, you can induce or deduce or whatever um, quite a bit. So just one more time here. Here we're looking at the relative risk in the first case here. We're going to look at the relative risk of IV drug users. Well, we look at the risk for an IV drug user divided by the risk in a non-IV drug user. And you see it's 10 times greater. Relative risk is 10 for IV drug users. But again, if I were to ask you, what's the relative risk of non-IV drug users? You would say it's 0 0.04 divided by 0 0.4, which is 1 out of 10, which is great. All right. So, attributable risk. Well, well I think I already talked about how attributable risk and absolute risk reduction are, are pretty similar. It just depends on whether you want to call something a good exposure, which people call an intervention, or a bad exposure. People just call an exposure. And so here, we're talking about, well, what's the attributable risk of this bad exposure? Okay, here they're talking, what's the attributable risk in, in, in being exposed to IV drugs? Well, you say, well, what's the risk in people who take IV drugs? Well, it's 0 0.4. And then they say, well, what's the risk in the non-IV drug group? Well, it's 0 0.04. So how much of the risk is due to taking drugs? Well, you can't say it's 0.4. Because that would be implying that there's a 0% risk in people who don't take drugs, and all the risks in the IV drug group for HIV comes from just being in the drug user group. And that's not the case, because as you can see, there are some people who don't take IV drugs who also have HIV. So you have to subtract it. Okay. Now, um, let's go down really quickly to absolute risk reduction, and we'll see how it's pretty similar. Except here, instead of looking at the effect, or sorry, the risk of um, uh, a bad effect, or which, which was um, doing, sorry, exposure, a risk of a bad exposure, which we considered to be being in the IV drug user group, here we're looking at the risk of a good exposure, or an intervention, and how it's reduced. And here we're seeing, ah, well, look at this, 40% uh, of people in the no drug exposure group, which is our intervention, I guess, compared to 4% in the yes drug exposure group. And then what's the risk reduction? Ah, well, it's 36%. And you'll see the exact same thing up here. 36% is the same thing as 0.36, right? So the, the implication here is that What's the attributable risk of a bad exposure? That's what they're saying. And for absolute risk reduction, they're saying what's the absolute risk reduction from a good exposure? 
But if you wanted to be cheeky, you could just as easily say, ah, well, what's the attributable risk of a good exposure, and what's the absolute risk reduction from a bad exposure, and you just have to flip some numbers around, okay? But the, the idea here is still the same. It's good exposure versus bad exposure. All right. So now let's go to a relative risk. All right. So relative risk, of course, here you're going to have to do a uh, quotient because relative. And it's just the risk reduction. Okay. Well, let's look at this. It's the same thing. 4% get HIV from uh, no drugs and 40% get HIV when they do do drugs. Okay. So you look at the relative risk of what we've been doing. The relative risk from the no drugs policy is 4 over 40, which is 0.1. Okay. And then you just subtract that from the, the total. 1 minus 0 0.1, 0 0.9. Hey, not bad. All right, this one's probably the most straightforward in my mind. Um, and then finally, we have the numbers needed to treat and the number needed to harm. And and when you look at your, your book or whatever, they'll say, oh, it's 1 divided by the absolute risk reduction or 1 divided by the attributable risk and whatever. Um, you can think about it like that, but I, th I think what's what's most helpful is think about it just in terms of, well, what the heck are they asking here? So let's look at, at this one right here, number needed to treat. So number needed to treat and number needed to harm are really the same concept, okay? How many need to be exposed in order for the outcome to be guaranteed for one person, okay? So what do I mean by the outcome needs to be guaranteed for one person? Well, I'm looking at this right here, 36% for your absolute risk reduction. So here we're looking at a good exposure and you have a 36% uh, reduction. But this is 36 people for every 100 people. So for every person, it's 0.36. So they're asking you, well, how many people do I need for this to be 100% for one person? You know, well, damn, you just do one divided by 0.36. You know, if you're trying to figure out how much until it's 100%, and you just do 1 divided by this, and that gives you something close to 2.8, okay? Um, and number you did to harm is the same thing. You say, well, okay, well, what was what was the attributable risk, you know? Uh, you know, how much of it was actually due to, to that? And same above, we got 36% when we did this thing above, right? 36%, 0.36. Well, if, if this is saying that, you know, it's 36% of the, um, the, the, the risk in the, the drug group or the risk of HIV uh, is, is due to that, then how much of it is just for one person? Well, 36%, which is 0.36 for one. So if I had wanted to make it 100% guaranteed for that one person to get that, I'll just do 1 divided by 0.36, which again is 2.8. And you'll see how attributable risk and absolute risk reduction, they're the exact same thing. The only difference is what are you applying it to? For attributable risk, they're always applying it to a negative um, exposure or just an exposure. And for absolute risk reduction, they're applying it to a positive exposure, which you can call an intervention. Okay, You can call that uh, being vaccinated, whatever. But the idea here is that Number needed to treat, absolute risk reduction, attributable risk, and just risk in general and relative risk. All of it is just exposure versus non-exposure. And the important thing is understanding that a good exposure we call an intervention, a bad exposure is just an exposure. And as long as you keep that in your mind, we're just looking at the outcomes from different exposures. Then all of this is pretty straightforward. Okay, there's no there's no real trouble with anything. And let's just look at one last thing: case fatality rate. This is very straightforward. You know, you got 20 people with cancer, five of them die. What's the case fatality? It's five divided by 20 times 100. 